Good morning there, this is Pastor Jeff, and we are here for our daily lectionary readings. It is for Thursday, September 26, 2024. Our psalm reading today is going to be Psalm 124. This will be our psalm reading for the next few days as we look ahead to what is happening at church on Sunday. Our Old Testament reading comes from Esther, chapter 1, verses 1 through 21. And then our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 13 through 31. And today we are in the Living Bible. Psalm 124. If the Lord has not been on our side, let all Israel admit it. If the Lord has not been on our side, we would have been swallowed alive by our enemies, destroyed by their anger. We would have drowned beneath the flood of these men's fury and pride. Blessed be Jehovah, who has not let them devour us. We have escaped with our lives as a bird from a hunter's snare. The snare is broken, and we are free. Our help is from the Lord, who has made heaven and earth. Our Old Testament reading comes from the book of Esther, chapter 1, verses 1 through 21. It was the third year of the reign of King Asherus, emperor of the vast Media Persia, with its 127 providences stretching from India to Ethiopia. This was the year of great celebration at the Shuspan Palace, to which the emperor invited all the governor's aides and army officers, bring them in from every part of the Media Persia for the occasion. The celebration lasted six months, a tremendous display of the wealth and glory of his empire. When it was all over, the king gave a special party for the palace servants and officials janitors and cabinet officials alike, for seven days of revelry held in the courtyard of the palace garden. The decorations were green, white, and blue, fastened with purple ribbons tied to silver rings embedded in the marble pillars. Gold was silver. Benches stood on pavements of black, red, white, and yellow marble. Drinks were served in gold goblets of many design, and there was an abundance of royal wine, for the king was feeling very generous. The only restriction on the drinking was that no one should be compelled to take more than he wanted, but those who wished could have as much as they pleased, for the king had instructed his officers to let everyone decide this matter for himself. Queen Vashiti gave a party for the women at the palace at the same time. On the final day, when the king was feeling high, half drunk from wine, he told the seven eunuchs who was his personal aides, Mehuman, Bistu, Habanana, Bigatha, Agapatha, Zaytar, and Carcass, to bring Queen Vashti to him with the royal crown upon her head, so that all the men could gaze upon her beauty, for she was a very beautiful woman. But when they conveyed the emperor's order to Queen Vashti, she refused to come. The king was furious, but first consulted his lawyers, for he did nothing without their advice. They were men of wisdom who knew the temper of the times, as well as the Persian law and justice, and the king trusted their judgment. These men were Karshinia, Shitar, Admatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marisha, and Mumakan, seven high officials of Media Persia. They were his personal friends, as well as being the chief officers of the government. What shall we do about the situation, he asked them. What penalty does the law provide for a queen to refuse to obey the king's order, properly sent through his aides? Memekun answered for the others, Queen Vashti has wronged not only the king, but every official and citizens of your empire. For women everywhere will begin to disobey their husbands when they learn what Queen Vashti has done. 
And before this day is out, the wife of every one of us officials throughout the empire will hear what the queen did and will start talking to us, husbands, the same way. And there will be contempt and anger throughout your realm. We suggest, subject to your agreement, you issue a royal edict, a law of the Medes and Persians that can never be changed, that Queen Vashti be forever banished from your presence, and that you choose another queen more worthy than she. When this decree is published throughout your great kingdom, husbands everywhere, whatever their rank, will be respected by their wives. The king and all his aides thought this made good sense, so he followed Mimikin's counsel. Our New Testament reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 4, verses 13 through 31. When the council saw the boldness of Peter and John, and could see that they were obviously uneducated, non-professionals, they were amazed and realized what being with Jesus had done for them. And the council could hardly discredit the healings when the man they had healed was standing right there beside them. So they sent them out of the council chambers and conferred among themselves. What shall we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have done a tremendous miracle, and everyone in Jerusalem knows about it. But perhaps we can stop them from spreading their propaganda. We'll tell them that if they do it again, we'll really throw the book at them. So they called them back in and told them never to speak about Jesus. But Peter and John replied, You decide whether God wants us to obey you instead of him. We cannot stop telling about the wonderful things we saw Jesus do and heard him say. The council then threatened them further and finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without it starting a riot. For everyone was praising God for their wonderful miracles, the healing of a man who had been lame for 40 years. As soon as they were free, Peter and John found the other disciples and told them what the council had said. Then all the believers united in this prayer, O Lord, creator of heaven and earth, of the sea, and everything in them, you spoke long ago by the Holy Spirit through our ancestor, King David, your servant, saying, Why do the heathen rage against the Lord, and the foolish nations plan their little plots against Almighty God? The kings of the earth unite to fight against them and against the anointed Son of God. This is what happened here in the city today. For Herod the king and Pontius Pilate, the governor, and all the Romans, as well as all the people of Israel, are united against Jesus, your anointed son, your holy servant. They won't stop at anything that you and your wise power will let them do. And now, O Lord, hear their threats and grant them to your servants great boldness in their preaching and send your healing power and may miracles and wonders be done by the name of your holy servant jesus after this prayer the building where they were meeting shook and they were filled with the holy spirit and boldly preached god's message and here ends our readings for the day